YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we have here. Finally, the long-awaited A170 airliner. You may notice that our nose gear is a little bit different than what comes in the uh, totally stock box. That's because it was so ugly, I had to modify it. Before we even fly, and there, it's already chirping at you. We have EDFs, twin EDFs, that's about 10% power, and differential thrust, which is super cool, but no rudder. So, a little bit of a trade-off, no steerable nose gear as well, but our nose gear is still removable. We did run into one problem with our Y cable on this plane, and we'll show you in the unbox build radio setup, which is a little bit longer than usual, so you might be understanding why after you see that. So, here goes nothing. Uh, there are three modes on this controller, 6GM, Surface, and then 3D. I believe that's what that means. I mean, it's Chinese stuff. You never know until you try it. So, 6G. Here goes nothing. Oh man, that's got good power. And it really is good at auto leveling. It's just a little bit restrictive. Oh yeah, keep your speed up. That's pretty good speed. It's quiet, which is nice for an yeah. EDF. Okay, cam crew, I'm gonna stay back here in the shade. Okay. I'm slowing it down. We think we have the CG about right. Oh, that's pretty cool. But as with other differential thrust uh, limited aircraft, that is fast. Like is. I'm at 50% throttle. As with other limited to only differential thrust aircraft we've had in the past, you do get a limited amount of differential thrust. So the flight controller is trying its best. Twin brushless EDFs. I don't know if I mentioned that. Generally, they're brushless, but I guess you could do them with just a regular ducted fan and a brushed motor. These are both brushless, which explains why it's a little bit more than some of this type of plane. Okay, now we're in 3D. I don't know what that means, actually. I think it means that we're going to be allowed to drive it in all directions. Oh, yes, it does, but there's still something happening. I think it auto levels just slowly. It's kind of weird. Okay, slowing it down, bring it over the tree line. Oh, that looks pretty sweet, actually. So the 3D is kind of like a little bit less restrictive version, but we still have stabilization, which is super nice, guys. I did not think we were going to get that. Let's go out to the tip of the shadow. Nope, to your left. Megan, that's the right. There you go. Perfect, thank you. Perfect, right there. We're trying to negotiate where the sun is. When we fly these little planes, we try to make it so that you can actually see them because little planes are really hard to film and the camera crew has to work overtime to keep them in camera. Now, I gotta say, for being a little jet, I can't believe how nice this thing's flying. It flies on 3S, 950 milliamp hours, which is a little weird. And I think they did the smaller, weirder size as opposed to a thousand like you get in a million different planes is because there was either some sort of a manufacturing defect and they got them for cheaper or they wanted to get the CG right. I'm kind of thinking toward the latter. But I got to say, other than the one little manufacturing flaw we had on our Y cable where our signal wire was basically broken at the Y, Thus, we only had one aileron that worked. Other than that, it's pretty dang good. And this bigger transmitter has been working pretty dang good. A little bit of overcorrection on the stabilizer. But beyond that, I'm actually living it up. I do hear manned aircraft, so I got to keep it real low until I can identify. Oh, they're right up there. But they're way, way, way above us. They're probably a thousand feet up or more. Actually, more like two. Let's just do a slow pass. I want to see how slow we can make it before it stalls. Okay. Well, we're with the wind, so I'm going to get into the power. The thing that's nice about this, though, is you have enough power to get away from problems, folks. Okay, now I want to try what happens when it says, sir. So surface, I think, is what it means. Oh, yeah. Surface, I think it just, I don't know what that top setting is supposed to do. I think it might give you a little bit more engaging differential thrust so you can navigate down the runway when you're taxiing. 
So I want to try for a high speed pass, folks. I, I got to say, I like the way that this plane looks. I wish there was a little bit more dihedral in it and it would help with the scale appearances. But once you're in the air, look at the dihedral. It's not too bad. That's what I was thinking would happen. And then I got to say also, I'm surprised how quick it stalls. Let's go about 10 steps to our right here so we can be closer to the edge of the shadow. Okay, and we're gonna try for a high speed pass into the wind. You guys see the overcorrection I was talking about? One way you could potentially resolve that is if we're in the middle hole for the ailerons, you could go to the inside hole, or excuse me, the outside hole. See on this 3D mode, you can flip it upside down, but it's just, it's just a stabilizer. There is no way on this particular configuration to have no stabilizer. So you have to have a stabilizer. And then the yaw, the yaw is kind of a, very limited, let's say, because I'm trying to coordinate my turns and you can hear it screaming the one EDF. So you get a little bit of yaw authority. Let's try to do a flat turn here. I'll bring it up here and uh, just full yaw input. And you guys can see it's kind of cutting in a circle. It's uh, there's a little bit to it, but honestly, I'm quite surprised at how well it's doing for being a small, ready to fly, everything but six double A's. And it does look the part with that speed. Also, I think with the nose gear and mains off of there, which by the way, those back mains do pivot. And so they look super sweet. All right, I wanna see if I can get a landing, but you can tell we're going, our circuit today for whatever reason has ended up being sort of with the wind on, on landing. It's such a minor speed, we're gonna still turn around. I'm gonna try to land it so that we can see the landing with the sun. Okay, so we're gonna bring it out of, uh, no, we're already in 3G mode or 3D mode. Get that nose down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was not a very good landing, folks. But I must say, this thing is surprisingly good for being a little ready to fly. Okay, camera crew is going to hold that. One, two, three. I did definitely plop that down. If I would have been a little bit more well practiced, I could have done it. In fact, let's do one more. Let's see if we can get it better. But look, now we've got pseudo retracted landing gear. <laughs> so I'm gonna bend that back just a little bit and then we're gonna take back off. But this is what I was talking about. They're just very ugly. <laughs> in the air, do they bother you as much? No, not as much. Sometimes they're worse in the air than this. Okay, so let's go ahead. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so do you guys see what happened? My landing gear wiggled, and I think what's going on is during that rough landing, I probably broke one of the mounts free a little bit. So the moral of the story is, if you're a beginner pilot, this thing's probably getting a little bit tough for you. Um, not that there's anything wrong with getting this as a beginner, you're just gonna have to struggle to keep things in real good shape. Ooh, maybe my battery shifted. This is where we're running our CG right there. And that's per the manual. And so it's really pretty easy to get the battery in there. And then I think what we're going to do is we'll just, let's just x -nay that plan and just go straight to the hand launch. <laughs> that one got bent a bunch. But the thing is, it was super easy to modify this to look a lot better. And I'm telling you, once I get these landing gear out, I think it's going to be a lot nicer looking plane. Um, you will have to get a little speed for your launch. So I'm going to try my best. Okay, I'm in 3D, so I'm going to go to 6G, the middle. And the wind is kind of blowing this way, so we'll launch over here. And I want to have a bailout over grass. Okay. So I'll probably come up here into the sun so we can see good. And I'll launch that way. And if I have to fail, I hopefully won't destroy my nacelles. Okay. This thing has tons of power. Full throttle. Oh, yeah. Oh, no problem at all. I just like the way it flies in the 3D mode a little better. Oh, and by the way, this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about if you're using an open TX transmitter or a multi-protocol transmitter, whether it be a radio master or some sort of apparatus like that, where you can actually get in there and change the protocol, if you could find this protocol, it would be so nice. Because I'll tell you what, this transmitter does not suffer 
like the 400 millimeter Warbird series that we've seen of the past, mm -hmm. they're great beginner planes, but the thing is one of the biggest problems you have is the insufferably crappy gimbals. These ones are not bad. I just think having a little extra control over what the modes are doing might be nice. You may be able to shut off the stabilizer, but I love the way it's going. And honestly, you can fly it a little bit slower without all that extra drag from the landing gear and they look good. The nacelles are actually not too cartoony huge. I thought they were gonna be huge, but that speed is pretty scale looking. And I'm trying to slow it down. It doesn't stall quite as bad. And to be frank, you could push that battery forward a little bit more and get the thing a little bit more stable even still. And that would help with some of the sensitivity on pitch. But I must say, it is definitely a looker, goodness gracious. I mean, even for being, and look, you got power. That was 70% power just to get away from the house. You know what happens when I get too close to the house, folks? <laughs> And I keep thinking I'm going to hit that windsock. I'm just okay. nervous about landing. I'm not. Okay. Full throttle. See, guys, the thing's got power. It it's got power to spell. Hey, one thing, too, I must say also about airliners is that they do tend to like to disappear a little bit more. Oh, almost had a bird strike. That would have been terrible. This thing's the same size as the birds. Um, what I was going to say is if you have bad eyes, airliners like to blend in because you have a blue belly and you have a white top. And you see, I mean, you've got good visibility now because the sun is at our back, but I'm telling you, they are the first to disappear. So just plan on it. That's why I'm flying down over the tree line or so that you guys get a view of it because that white will pop up against the dark backdrop. When we get green on the trees, it's going to be so good. Because camera crew, best in the industry here with me, Megan, my wife of many years. And green backdrops make these planes pop. So we're super excited for spraying for that and a million other reasons. This thing's flown for a long time too. Yeah, it has. I've been paying attention to the time, but I got to say for being a little ready to fly, the thing is dang near hobby grade. Um, mid span ailerons is one of my biggest complaints on this plane even bigger than having a bad servo Y cable. I can forgive that all day long. Let's go on the inside, actually. And that was probably a fluke. I mean, yeah, it was a fluke. We're gonna call it a fluke, folks. We're, we're not about covering for RC manufacturers, but what I will say is this. If you make a complex little machine like this and you're doing it for the kind of money that the Chinese are doing, I honestly I have no clue how they do it. Because if you think about the complexity of these little aircraft, there's just so much going on. And so if you have one wire that breaks in shipping across the entire planet, I would say, well, that's better than I could do. So I guess I don't wanna give them a pass on poor quality control, but I do wanna at least say, it's probably not a big deal, we can fix it. We showed you how to fix it too. So now I'm gonna come in for a final. <clears throat> I feel like my batteries are getting a little bit less juicy. So I'm trying to be generically cautious. So I'm going to go around in the bowl once, reserving a little bit of power, and we're just going to put it down right next to the runway if all goes to plan. So just going to bring it in and let it get to the stall. Oh yeah, that was totally that was doable, good. folks. Okay, so thoughts about this plane. First of all, it's gorgeous. Second of all, it looks great. Third, it could look better. <laughs> so it's like, those are the three highlights. And I must say, it's, they've really worked out the electronics nicely. Um, I did not think it was gonna be nearly that good. And honestly, we did have rain within the recent couple of days. And so that did really good on a belly landing. It wasn't bad. We had a little bit of damage here when we unboxed it. I don't even know what that's from, but I could fix it. We wanted to show it in the video. Because what we do here on Brian Phillips RC is not be apologists for these little companies. We want you to know what you're getting. And so if we were to hide things that go wrong, what would be the point of watching our videos other than watching me crash into our own house? So I love this plane. It's super cool. And yes, compared to the ones with the little pusher props on the back that we had of yesteryear. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with those. They're very cool. Um, but they're also just a little bit smaller 
The bodies are a little bit smaller too. And this thing has some power, folks. What it doesn't have is inboard flaps or mid-span flaps or outboard ailerons. If you really wanted to make this thing something special, you could go crazy and make some flaps and make some ailerons here. And then this could be another flap too. You could have a flap controlled by one servo for both of those panels and it would look so sweet. And I even love the fact that the canoe is molded in there and it's part of this mid-span aileron. Of course, it wouldn't be in real life. The ailerons would be out here and then spoilers would actually actuate the roll axis of this plane. Of course, then we would have a big rudder and all that. I have no problem with differential thrust, although I do think that rudder would help this plane in terms of its overall performance. It's a beautiful plane, uh, went together okay. That was where most of the problems came up. We had some paint that came off. We touched it with a black marker, it was super easy. And then of course, inside of here, it was a little bit of a challenge to figure out how the heck to put the battery in, mm -hmm. okay? Now also, we probably pushed that battery pretty far. I would suggest that on your first flight, you might wanna go maybe seven minutes, something like that. I think you'll be safe. Um, also, I was gonna say the EDF fans are a little bit lame looking, but to be frank, you can't see them when they're running. So I try not to beat them up on things like that because this is a new design fan. If you look at it, it's different than what we've seen, but it's definitely not a 12 or 14 blade or something like we've seen in the bigger 50s, uh, 64s, 70s, and that sort of thing. But I gotta say, the thing looks absolutely fantastic. And I think you're gonna like it if you want to help support Brian Phillips RC, what we want you to do is check out the links in the video description below. And when you buy these planes from the links, you do two things, two major things. A, you serve yourself by getting an awesome plane, and B, you serve us by small commissions from the companies, which you also serve technically, by buying these things. And then the fourth thing that's really good is that completes the cycle of the RC marketing ecosystem. <laughs> because what we want to do is we want to provide a service to both you guys at home watching this video, trying to make a decision if this thing is an actual turd or not, which I would say this is definitely out of the turdish league. <laughs> and, and at the same time, we want to help the manufacturers sell them. Because if it's a turd and you know it, then they just end up <laughs> adjusting the price until you buy it. And if you buy a cheap turd, you can make a cheap turd pretty cool. This thing is not a turd, it's actually pretty nice. So be careful when you're screwing in this hole so you don't lose your paint there because that was a little bit of a tragedy in my book. And then the secondly, I would say the mod that we did on the nose gear was perfectly fine. I have no clue why they're so tall. In fact, I'd like to modify all of them except that these nacelles are going to touch. That is still a little bit big nacelle for this size of plane, but there's power to spare and we never can say that about little toy grade planes. Yeah. So WL Hobbies I, or WL, WL Toy uh, did this one and we really like it. You may find it in different brands later on, but we're gonna link to where this was provided to us from. And we love reviewing these planes, guys. So this is super fun. And I especially love airliners, especially the Boeing's. Yes, it's totally Boeing brand. That. So yeah, if you guys are looking for the best knockoffs in the world, just look no further than China. <laughs> China. This is cool. You want it, I promise. Oh, by the way, full disclosure, we got ours with two batteries. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest when you order planes like this, uh, make sure you pick out mode two if there's a choice. Um, in our case, we got mode two. I'm gonna fix that with spackle probably. It'll take me 10 seconds. You'll never know it was there and you won't see it in flight anyway. And this thing has some definite issues on the lines, but the thing is it's got a good side profile if you could get the wings to be bent up a little bit. The tail profile is okay. There should be a little bit more dihedral here too. But I also feel like the body compared to the wing size is maybe a little bit of a mismatch. Um, but it's, it's, it's manageable. Like all those details are not so far off that it's, you know, you, you can't make your brain see an airliner. Um, so I, I really like the way it looks. So that being said, it also flies okay too but it's not gonna be a wide flight envelope. And that's why I said, if you really wanna go crazy on this thing, you could cut in some inboard flaps. You could even set a fixed flap and it would help this thing slow down because you wanna know what's wrong with this plane is that it flies fast for the beginner. So a fixed flap would be something you could do and it would be relatively easy 
you would cut in, you know, just a small amount, you know, maybe drop it down a couple millimeters. So it'd go to like the bottom of the fuse here. And you would just have this inboard portion, cut it with an X-Acto knife, run it down, figure out a way to fix it in position with a little wedge of balsa wood or something of the sort, maybe some clear plastic that's very thin, glue it in there with CA, fix your flap, do it on the same side, exactly the same symmetry. When you take off, you'll notice that you can have a little bit more elevator authority, which means you might be able to go to the outside hole. Same thing here to get rid of that wing oscillation, you go to the outside hole. That would stop it from doing this while it's flying all the time. So just a lot of little tweaks that you could do to this plane to make it something special. And um, controllable flaps would be even better, of course. If somebody wanted to go that route, um, I asked you this earlier, but you hadn't flown it. If you did the outboard ailerons, mm -hmm. do you think now that you've flown it that it's gonna have enough authority? Roll authority? Yeah. Um, first of all, 100%. Second of all, we have bracing out to here. So as long as you have a contact point here, I feel like you're gonna get enough movement. See, the problem is you get out here and it might bend. Okay, so the reason they go inboard on these thin wings is because they need something that can move without flexing the wing in this torsion effect, okay? Mm. So if this were basically, you know, lengthened, if you wanna call it like lengthening it, you could just cut it and make a longer aileron, but you don't need more roll authority you just basically need them out here so you can make room for that for being flaps. part of the flap right. and that being part of the flap. I mean, the inboard portion would be where I'd want the flaps on this plate anyway. Uh, but if you had a mid span and an inboard flap, it looks super cool. And then of course they've given us these nice little panel lines that simulate, you know, like the leading edge slats here, leading edge, um, I think those are leading edge slats, not flaps. But then this, uh, this would be a flat panel and then this, these would be the simulating the ailerons. And then on the, uh, 770 and 780, I believe these are also ailerons. So there's a lot of complex stuff happening on airliner wings. Of course, we're not going to get that, um, at least for another 20 years in small models like this. But what I would love to see is just a, a flap on here because you could really slow it down. That being said, if you did that, you'd probably have to go to a more sophisticated receiver because even though this thing has a twin board in it with ESCs for both wings, and a receiver and all sorts of stuff, which is a lot, you'd have to get real creative to redo all that. So maybe it would be as simple as just pulling out all the electronics, going to your own ESC, and then running it that way. They used a micro PH2S connector for the ESC leads, which has got to lead to a lot of resistance that's not necessary. But truthfully, these are small motors and micro PH connectors are notorious for not carrying a lot of current. So strange choice, but they do work and you have plenty of power, nothing caught on fire. I don't smell anything burning, so I think we're good. Um, other than that, I don't wanna fly this like a P-51. I don't wanna fly it like a Warbird. Some of you guys might wanna do that. If you wanna do it, you can do it. That's what's cool about some of these overpowered planes that we're getting lately. And it's been so much easier to get out of trouble when you have power because you don't need that much to get off the ground, you've got a little extra to make up for a mistake. But the trade-off is it's heavier and there's pretty high wing loading, which means that it sinks fast. And you saw it when I landed because I came in with the landing gear and I think what happens is it just, it just wants to roll back. And then once you roll back, you just get into a, you know, a high-speed stall. It's not actually a full stall. It's like a high-speed stall and you wash all your control surfaces with this. So, you could do better by just landing and flying it and then just like let off the power until it bumps the ground. Goodness gracious. So that's an option. The other option is belly landing it, taking off those ugly landing gear in the first place. And the first person that puts in a nine gram servo to retract these and a nine gram servo to retract this wins the gold star for the day. I just wanna see pictures. So leave it in the comments if you've already seen it and we appreciate you guys. By the way, if you ever put a link on our channel, it gets held for review automatically, so I see that stuff, so we appreciate it. Um, but at the end of the day, we love bringing you guys the latest and greatest. This one has been out for a little bit, but we've struggled to find anybody that's gonna be able to work with us. So we did, and we're gonna show you a link for this right now. Check it out, guys. And by the way, if you wanna find a plane and you can't find it, check out brianphillipsrc.com. That's www.brianphillipsrc.com. Dot com. Thanks for watching guys. So much more. Stay tuned for the Unbox Build Radio Setup. YouTube, we have something new and exciting. And this one in particular, I'm super excited about because it's something I've been wanting to do for some time. 
and I can't wait to share it. So hopefully it's everything I was hoping it would be. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. So here goes nothing, guys. As usual on Brian Phillips RC, you wanna help support the channel, buy the stuff from the links. We'll link to this down below. Awesome, look at that. It's the A170 Explorer. So this would be an airliner that looks uh, similar to a real picture of a real plane. I don't think it quite looks that good, but if it does look like that good, I'm gonna be really happy. Uh, I think it's gonna be slightly more cartoonish, but we're gonna find out here in just mere seconds after we get this very weirdly packaged box opened. There you go. Okay, oh, cool. Looks like we have a battery here too. Okay, so maybe it was supposed to come with two and it just came with one in the package. Okay, so here's the real picture of it. So as you can see, it is 660 millimeter wingspan, twin electric ducted fans in a ready to fly package, 2.4 gigahertz, 6G, so it's got a gyroscope, so it should do auto leveling. And I'm excited for this because basically these things are kind of hard to come by. But we found a place to so do it. Oh, that looks bigger than I thought, awesome. Okay, all right, we're just gonna open this thing, unbox it, and see what it has to offer for us. Okay, so let's get this stuff out. We've got batteries here. Looks like it came with some landing gear, probably a wing spar carbon fiber, charger. Let's actually break out the charger right now so we can talk about what's gonna come in your package if you order it from the links. We try to review these things stock, but we show you some better options for chargers because chargers are one of those things that you wanna have. If you get into the hobby a little deeper, okay, so this is 3S, 950 milliamp hour. That's very weird. Why not just go over the edge and make it a thousand? Hmm, yeah. XT30. Hextronics balance lead. And it looks like they sent a spare or a second battery as well. <clears throat> Many times when you order these planes, you can get one or two or sometimes even three batteries. My recommendation is always order it with as many batteries as you can get because they are the dirt cheapest batteries you're gonna buy in the yep. hobby. Now you do end up with drawers full of batteries and that's <laughs> not necessarily always great because lipos can be a bit of a safety concern if you aren't taking care of them. So make sure you properly discharge them for best results, meaning fly, don't charge them unless you know when you're gonna be flying again and it's within a couple days, okay? Or if you get smart packs like these, they will auto discharge, which is super nice. And we'll talk about that more at some point. But this is the charger that comes with it. Of course, you have to provide your own USB port or USB adapter for the wall. So something like this. And then there's a Hextronics balance lead here. And that plugs in and it tells you the input and output, <clears throat> input and output voltage. So it's gonna charge at two amps. So it's gonna be a two C charge rate. Now, um, let's just show you that it does work real quick. And what we'll do for that is we'll plug one of these into the provided charger, but we'll first go into an XBC battery checker, must have for your toolkit. Obviously you can follow our links for these things. If you can't find the stuff we talk about on our channel, sometimes you have to ask the questions in the comments, we'll try to help you out. Or just head over to Brian Phillips RC and we'll show you what we need. Okay, so we have a red flashing light, slow flash. And this is gonna essentially charge any 2S LiPo. And it's gonna go to a solid, okay? So let's see what we got for voltage. I should have plugged it in first. Okay, so this one's at 30% or 3.8 almost perfectly. That's what you wanna see for optimal lithium polymer. I'll actually put the higher one on this charger. And then what we're gonna do, so you only have to plug in the balance lead and what it's gonna do is it's gonna charge each of the cells individually. And so if you guys don't know how this works, this is a balance lead. This is the discharge lead. The discharge lead goes into the plane or the car or the truck or the whatever it is. And then this is how you control the charging of each cell. There's one cell, then there's two cells. That's the second cell. This is the third cell. And so in series, this is the same as this. So if you were to take a multimeter, you would get zero ohms of resistance between these two because they're attached down here and then zero ohms of resistance here, okay? So your voltage across these two leads would be the same or about 12 volts. 
and then from here to here, about 12 volts as well. So what we're gonna do is we'll show you how we charge them on a nicer charger. Now, if you wanna get a nice charger that can do all the stuff we do on this channel, which is up to 6S so far, the S2200 is what we always recommend. They also have an S1200 in a similar size class. That's a 200 watt single, single charge port. So single channel, this is a dual channel. Got the IC3 and IC5, as well as the balance lead. And then the S155, which is super cheap. It's got a similar display to this, but it's off right now. And so that'll only do up to 4S. Now the catch is when you get ends like XT30s, you have to have the right connector to be able to charge them. And so what I've done over the years is I've just built little adapters like this. And basically all I do is find the appropriate adapter when I'm ready to make a charge on one of these batteries. So I built this little adapter and that's gonna take me from XT30 to IC3 or in this case EC3, which stands for E-Flight Connector. So I can plug that in here or I could plug it in here or I could plug it in there. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. And since we work with a lot of Spectrum gear, of course we don't mind having the IC3s or the EC3s. I prefer IC3s, they're a lot better than the EC3s. Okay, so you plug this in, you can immediately see it populate the screen. And then you have to plug this in. Now this isn't a smart battery, so you have to set it up. So you're gonna basically press this. Five amps is a little much for this. So if you charge, you can charge as low as 0.1 amp or as high as you want, you might just catch the dang thing on fire, but we'll charge at the same rate. And there it goes. And then I can go down here and see the live voltage of each cell, as well as the internal resistance, which is a measure of wear and tear on the battery. So you can see they're very similar, so that's good. Also, this thing gives you a lot of the same data, but then the additional factors that you might wanna do is setting up your smart batteries to auto discharge. So always like to review that stuff. We have a link to smart stuff, and we're gonna continue on with the video, but we always like to get the chargers going so that while we're reviewing, we can be charging. So without further ado, this is empty now. That's the charger box. We got landing gear in here, a little chunk of cardboard it looks like. Now this is the ugliest part of the plane, but I am a sucker for wheels up, wheels down. That means you take off with the wheels and you land on the wheels, relatively soft. Show them the squeeze. So these yeah. are really long and really ugly, but we're gonna see how it works. And I do love that those pivot. Maybe they'll look better in real life than they do on the boxes. But what I'd like to do is just see if it works well. If it works well, then we'll go with it. If it doesn't, then we'll take them off immediately and hand launch. So one problem with hand launching EDF planes that we've experienced, this must be a wing joiner of some sort. And then look at that. We've got a nice pair of replacement EDF fans okay so just keep in mind these go the same direction or opposite directions i can't tell they are opposite directions sweet so we got counter rotating blades that's gonna be so cool and then one bag of screws so it looks like we got a couple of different lengths so we'll have to keep an eye on that but we'll lay this stuff out a little bit of assembly required on this as with other planes that we've done in the past should be no big problem so a 700 and by the way, if you guys are curious, this is a WL Toys. If you're curious to read the Chinese, all you have to do is whip out your phone, pull up Google and type the word translate. When it starts to populate your screen with search results, there will be an application that has a camera or a microphone that comes up, an icon that will allow you to choose that camera on your smartphone. If your smartphone supports this feature and you can highlight this and read it in English, it's so, stinking cool and you can do that for just about any language which is really really cool so i don't know if you guys were aware of it it's like magic when you do it even the background will match the colors mm -hmm. and you can move it and it's really cool okay so the instructions are going to tell us how to do this but as with most instructions we're going to largely ignore them because we've done so many planes that we can build these in our sleep 787 definitely not a licensed product obviously and this does not have a rudder that I can tell, but it looks like they designed it to be able to be cut out at some point. So we have a singular screw and then a receptacle to go in there and catch. This must be the battery catch. 
All right, so then next, I'm gonna fold these tabs out. <clears throat> uh, I don't like the way that's coming out. There we go. Wow, that looks really nice, actually. I hope these things have a little bit of dihedral on them. So we have an EDF plug, <clears throat> micro PH2S connector. That is gonna be very low current draw. Uh, excuse me, very low current capability. So if you ever had problems on this plane, that'd be the first thing to replace. And then of course for the servo, which is gonna go out to the aileron. And then in typical Chinese fashion, they put the aileron in the middle of the wing instead of going out to the end like they should. Uh, for cool factor and also for leverage factor. I don't know why they do that, but the thing that's cool about having it inboard is if you ever did set this thing up as flaperons, you could do that. You see this is bent. I'm gonna just bend that back a little bit. This is not EPS, it's EPO. So it's got a lot of resilience and wiggle, but there is a carbon fiber spar here. And then of course you got the little EDF. So it looks nice. Obviously the foam is not quite as nice a finish as you'll expect on like an ultra micro from Horizon or something in that order because it's not using EPS. And so that means it's also slightly heavier. So you'll need to be aware that lighter planes made of EPS, which is like what you eat off of a plate, you know, um, is gonna be a lot less resilient to damage than EPO. Of course, this is gonna be like an EPO, some layer of, or some level of EPO. And the only other thing I'm noticing is I, I want that effect on a 787. Um, if it was a, a Dreamliner or 7, 777, then of course the wings would be a carbon fiber design and they would flex all the way down the length. And so it's really cool looking. It looks like these are gonna go together in some sort of a locking fashion here. So we'll see how that goes here in just a few seconds. Now the fuse, please don't be an ugly nose. Please don't be an ugly nose. <laughs> That's not a bad nose actually. It's got a good nose. Wow, that is sweet looking. I am super happy with the way this looks, but I'm not super happy with the damage here and the damage there. We have damage on both sides. Now, if you wanna fix something like that and you see it, I'm a little bit disappointed, but it's not the end of the world. These planes are gonna see a little bit of wear and tear. And especially if you're a new pilot in RC, probably don't freak out over that. You can take some spackle and just put it over there. Lightweight spackle, like what you would fix your drywall with. You can scrape it over there and fix that, but it is gonna look a little bit lighter and less reflective and shiny there. Mm -hmm. uh, good paint on the bottom. I like the blue. It looks really nice. Is this thing a licensed product? I doubt I it. I doubt There's it. No way I think it, is. it would say if it was. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they have gotten many cease and desist letters from Boeing and they've been like, what? Oh no, we mean Boeing. Great. So elevator, split elevators. They're in the middle hole already. That's interesting. And the linkage goes all the way to the front on a very small servo. That's a little bit scary. Uh, never seen a good success on that. We do have some sort of a flight controller here, twin EDF module coming down, and it looks like the multi-layer board. That is a different thing we've not seen before. So we'll have to see how that works out, but it looks like there's a little bit of twist in here, and that's where the battery is gonna end up, I believe. Just not sure how that's gonna load. So we'll find that out shortly. Uh, but you can see how the, ooh, they must have designed a rudder to go in there. Because look at that. That doesn't, that looks left, like a rudder hole to me. Left room for a wire or the- No, they left room for a servo. Package. No, that's the room for a servo. Huh. So I don't know if you, if you wanted, you could put a servo there and then put a linkage there, but I am not sure if they have a receiver port open for it. So at worst case scenario, you could probably go ahead and add your own receiver and just take out the crappy included one and do some cool stuff. But anyway, we're not gonna necessarily do that. I don't wanna give you guys lots of terrible ideas on things to do <laughs> with these Chinese planes because sometimes we find out that they're not worth doing anything to other than flying for a few days and crashing, okay? So the transmitter is not held in very good uh, with anything other than pressure, so be aware of that. That is not uncommon also. We've seen that from almost every brand. This is just EPS, really heavy duty and strong. It seems like there's very little damage on it but we did see the damage right here. I don't like that at all. That's kind of irritating. Okay, so A700, uh, or excuse me, A170. This is an X8. We've seen this before with some scale helis that we did back in the day for XK actually. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I've actually been very happy with this transmitter. My only complaint is it uses six batteries instead of four. So you have to really blow through batteries. 
And you know, the ones we get from Harbor Freight are extra crappy. Right. So you're almost guaranteed they're gonna leak like while you're using it. <laughs> So, I do like that the transmitter is labeled because if you get a lot of these, yes. it's hard to remember. And it's hard to remember what the heck these stupid model numbers are. Yes. And so one of the best things you can do is if you're looking for something on brianphillipsrc.com, you can search by keywords uh, in, in the YouTube side of things. And then if you, wanna, if you wanna find something but you can't figure out where it is, then search by manufacturer and you can narrow it that way. So it'll be really easy to find this one. Uh, from RC going because we don't have a ton of different items there yet. So if you follow the link, you can buy this for yourself and then you can enjoy it just like we did and you'll be helping to support Brian Phillips RC and what we do here on YouTube. Okay, so next step is assembly. Looks like we've got one, two boxes and a couple of bags. So we didn't, actually it's kind of a low piece count. Yeah. I was thinking it was gonna be worse than that, mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a lot of bags. So we're gonna take a second, clean up and get some batteries and be right back. All right, so we're gonna mark this thing on the back. It is marked on the front, as you can see right there, but I'm gonna to forget to check that. So I'm gonna write A170, and this is the uh, Boeing, or it's not the Boeing uh, 787. <laughs> not that. It's definitely not the Boeing 787. But it's if you some were, other plane. If you're thinking about it yeah. really Yeah, I mean, hard. it's like A and B, A, B. Yes. So. <laughs> Okay, so we've got these openings. You need to put the flat side toward the back or toward the uh, spring. And you're gonna put all six batteries in real quick. Now, if you guys are new to flying, I just wanna warn you, twin EDF, electric ducted fans, might not be the best place to start, okay? There's gonna be more complexity and a higher probability of crashing. Now, we've got lots of these little 400 millimeter warbirds that we've talked about over the years and they're a great place to start, but we have even better choices for starters. And to be honest, I feel like this is a novelty item that people that are really aficionados in RC aviation are gonna enjoy, especially fixed wing. Um, okay, so there's a switch over here. It says SUR, S-U-R, G6M and 3DM. Like I have no clue what any of that crap means. This is gonna be throttle. This should be yaw for rudder. This would be roll as in ailerons and then elevator. And I see no other switches. These are obviously not clickers. This does have some settings. Nope, that's simulated. That's not, at, well, there's a stick mode and that. Okay, so we can turn this on. It says mode two. So stick mode, 100% or 80%. So there's high and low rates. There's high rates, there's low rates. So we'll start in high rates and then nothing else. Okay, so we have up, we have down, that arms it. Then we have a little representation of the proportional output. And then we have trim, okay, with a loud beep to let you know in the center. Little audible feedback with change of state on the switches. And like I said, this is simulated. Now, some of these that we have for the helicopters are actually a functional spinner with a push button in the middle. So just another way that the Chinese models are very hard to distinguish online. So when you come to Brian Phillips RC, we're gonna help you to establish whether or not you're getting what you expect to get. I do like the blue, I like that it's bright. I do like this, it's a good backlit LCD screen. I have no problem with a simple transmitter, by the way. I prefer a simple transmitter with a decent gimbal. These gimbals, eh, they're okay. They're fine, they're a little loose, but I can live with that. Now, one of the big advantages of this is we have trim, on all the axis, which is a big deal. And we have tightening screws. If you open this up, you can do some tightening and adjustments. Now, I don't know what's in here, but there's there's a hole. So like you can fill it with water. I don't, I don't know why they have a hole there. <laughs> so there is a hole there and there's plugs. I think what they do is normally there's a headphone jack there uh, that goes to like a train or something like that on some of the higher end models. Mm -hmm. So these plugs here, 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 and here just uh, fill a hole that would normally house a switch. Okay. And it is big enough to fit in your yep. hands. This Some is an adult are... controller size. Yep. It would work well. Now, if you're, you're getting this for a kid, you may struggle uh, a little bit more if they have small hands. But I would say generally this is pretty small compared to some transmitters. It's more similar to like the NX10 that we're used to using than it is similar to some of the other Chinese branded. You know, you're going to get this like little quarter Batman style, I think is what we call them because it kind of looks like a bat. Okay, so 
Let's get right into the build now that we have that fired up and ready to move on from. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open the page, read all the Chinese precautions, pack your lunch, um, don't make your battery, uh, spray fluids sad. out. Is it sad? I don't know, it looks like he's calling somebody. It's mm. got, so don't cut things. Don't use a butter knife. Yep, don't, don't, I don't. Fly in Like in leaves? leaves? <laughs> leaves and rain, okay. Okay. So right. now that we've established, we know all, all the safety rules. It. We should be okay. We'll weigh this thing to see if it's sub 250 in a little bit. My guess is it's probably gonna be more than sub 250 with that size of a battery. Um, looks pretty simple, assemble. Okay, so step two, starting with step two. Oh, go back, there you go. There is a step one, okay. So we have to find the little hole on the, we have to flip it over, find the smaller hole and then stick it in. Ooh. I know, could be dangerous. That is. So, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say this another third time, but I am gonna say this at least a second time. It looks like you can cut this rudder and make it a functional rudder, but I believe we have differential thrust on this, so it should give us some functional rudder. Anyway, now this has a small hole and we're gonna be using one of the small screws. So I'm gonna just slide this in. Mine has a little bit of China glue. China, right there, okay? Oh. So I'm just gonna go past the chain glue and stick this down. And it's just gonna hold it in place with a mechanical connection there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and put a screw in, okay? okay. So in order to do that, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna open up my nut and bolt sack, in this case, screw sack. I'm gonna find one of the smaller ones. You said they were smaller oh, and yep. bigger. Yep. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so in typical Chinese fashion, they have given us enough screws to do seven planes mm -hmm. and also confuse the heck out of everybody building them. So you grabbed a shorty, right? I grabbed a shorty and I'm just gonna find the, the tight, small hole and just ram it all the way down in oh. and then give it a couple of finger twigs tweaks. Okay, is it going? It's kind of hard to tell. Oh boy, do you see what just happened? No. That really irritates Aww. me. Look at that. All I did was turn the screw and the glue held that, that ticks paint. me off. Oh, so what I'm gonna have to do now, and that's a beautiful paint job, but do you see what happened guys? Be careful on yours. Um, I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna fix this because it's not rocket science, but you know what's funny? There's some movie magic for you here. Watch this, nobody will ever know. Nope. Including me, I will forget that I had to darken around the hole um, to resolve that conflict. But I am annoyed that that happened That's because great. that blue is so beautiful. It's a very lightweight paint and I'm just like not sure if I'm getting purchased or not. It's really kind of hard to tell. It is a good size screwdriver for that screw though. I have to feel like it's not going in. I'm 100% sure because I've just pulled it out. And look at this, guys. What the heck? Now I'm worried. Yeah, we've seen this before. This is like a dynam thing. Hmm. I don't think we're gonna continue to have this problem because what we're gonna do is we're gonna be smart fellers and we're gonna just tap that right out of the bottom. It's probably stuck in the No, glue. it is, it is. So watch this, I'm gonna take the screwdriver, I'm gonna stick it through the hole, watch this. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. Get out of there. I can, I can see the screw. There it is. Okay, so the screw came out and they must have just got a little teeny bit of china glue. China glue. Right there in on the that hole. seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my china glue screw. Where are you? Right. There you are. And I'm gonna try this. Now the camera crew told me smaller screw and I'm guessing she was wrong, okay? So the reason that I'm guessing she was wrong is because, yep, totally the wrong size. So China, China screws, we're gonna go with the long screw. The long skinny screw is gonna most definitely fit in the hole and it's gonna fit nicely. Okay, so now that we know that, we will know that and you guys will know that. So that's why you watch Brian Phillips RC. I'll screw up my uh, fake 787 so you don't have to. All right, so let's see if I can get that to go down. Now, if this doesn't line up with the hole, I have another trick. I'll show you what the trick is. Oh, I found it already. It's going in for sure. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, definitely got penetration. It's feeling good. Look at that screwdriver. I'm like almost out of screw. <laughs> Why did you move the camera? I'm bringing it to you. See this? Look, see, now it's tight. Now it's in. Awesome. That was too many steps, but it would have been easier if we had got the right screw on the first go around. So no big deal. 
All right, so plane is flipped upside down. As you can see, we have access to where the battery is gonna plug in. We have a little antenna here, an extra port. That probably uh, would be if we were doing something like a 1S connection to run this controller. Is then, that plugging into there? Um, no, they're, well, I guess, no, they're going to this. This is a Y cable for the ailerons. That, that is definitely a 2S entry for, or a single 1S plug. It's only two pins. Hmm. Okay, so we have to put these wings together. And the way that the wings go together is pretty simple. We're gonna take this rod, this joiner, we're gonna slide it through. And then I need these things to come out the top of the plane. So I have to slide that back together. Okay, so that's just gonna join our two wing halves. And then you can see they put a zip tie on there to kind of make it a little easier on us. And as you can see, the jigging on these Chinese models is not so tight, okay? But it's still good enough to do what we need to do. Now there's this weird void here, and I don't think it really does much of anything, but these two little clips are gonna actually catch into the plastic back here. And then this is gonna go right here. And that's gonna help to join those two wing halves together in the front this time. Okay, so you've got two wings, absolutely no dihedral, which is a little bit disappointing. I'm hoping that once we get in the air, we'll get a little bit of weight on it so it'll go up a little bit because really that's one of the marquee things, the trademarks of the Boeing airliners. So I wanna see some dihedral on airliners. All right, so this is clearly gonna go underneath. Should be no problem to get to that. Now let's go ahead and plug these things in right now. This is gonna plug in and it's gonna go very obviously where it goes, because there's a key on it. Okay, I would say turn on the light probably. Okay. Okay, so that's in. Now the zip tie can be pulled back a little bit just to give us more freedom and flexibility. This is a Y cable, doesn't matter which one you plug into. But there is a key and the key goes into that slot. So you wanna find the key and line it up on the top. See how it's lined up on the top so it goes in. You can also confirm color to color, dark to dark, light to light, red in the middle. And same thing over here. Uh, I've got it away from me this time, but you can see how it goes that way. Same thing, make sure it's all the way securely attached. And then this one, I'm gonna plug in over here. And then that connector needs to slide down to where we're gonna have access to it once we have the wing installed on the plane, okay. Now the twin EDF module is gonna be super fun. I can't wait to see how powerful it is. Um, and in my opinion, if I'm flying this like a scale aircraft, it's not gonna have to be super fast to be cool. It's gonna accomplish the goals I have for this plane, even if it's slow. In fact, I want it to fly slow because I want it to look scale. So there's two black holes there. You see those two black holes? That is what I need to line up down below. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go into this little pocket with those black things. You see those black things look like mm -hmm. fingers. I'm gonna slide those in as much as I can. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to get them lined up. Okay, so we're in, but you see those wires? That's the other thing I've been fighting this whole time. And I'm gonna use this actually, this uh, marker, to just push those up into the cavity so that I can rock that back and forth and allow those wires to not get squished because if they get squished, it's gonna cause a problem. Okay, so now we have four screws to install. Okay, that's snapped sort of together. That looks pretty sweet actually. That's a pretty good sized model. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's something not quite right on this scale wise. And I think largely it's got to do with the dihedral on the wing, but this is a wide body. Um, normally the body on this would not be quite that wide. So the scale's a little bit off. It, you know, your scale lines are gonna be a little bit disappointing in that regard, but it's not anything that you couldn't fix if you really decided you wanted to go crazy. I'm just excited to see if the thing flies well, and if it flies well, I can definitely overlook a few of those details. I tend to really like scale lines on scale planes, okay? So this is down. Now we need to get our little tiny, and by the way, this did come with the plane. So we have plenty to use the small screws again. I'm assuming we're gonna need the bigger screws, but uh, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It's the, it would be the next page where it said, but. Yeah. 
Who needs instructions? They're going to be wrong anyway. That's probably true. Okay, so there's two screws on the top or on the front. Oh yeah, that's definitely biting. Now I'm looking to close this gap here if I can possibly do it. Which screw did you end up with? The bigger one. Okay. It's like the thicker one. The shorter screw with a thicker shaft. See? Shorter screw with the thicker shaft, not the longer screw with the thinner shaft. Mm. Okay. What'd you think it was? I thought it was opposite. I must have been reading their measurements backwards. Yeah. That's fine. It wasn't that big a deal. Except that I ripped a giant hole in the the paint job, which is super weird. Not used to that happening. Okay, so now we have two more holes here and I honestly don't know which screws they are. I'm just gonna go with, I assume it's probably the same. The thing I like about this screwdriver is even though it looks like a terrible screwdriver, it actually fits perfectly into these screws. Now here's the trick of the day. I'm gonna hold it upside down and walk the plane down onto it. And then we're gonna do it that way rather than try to flip it upside down and go the other way. Because if we go the other way, there's a good possibility it's gonna miss the hole and then we'll be struggling with it. And yeah, that's super easy for like human hands. Okay, so I'm left with two screws. They managed to give us six screws, all of which are not used that I can tell. Oh, you know what they're used for? Maybe they're used to mount something else. No, because look, the EDF modules, the nacelles are mounted in a mm -hmm. different way. Mm -hmm. So I actually have no clue what they're used for. Just well, extra fun. They're just extra confusion. Yep. They're confusion screws. Keep us busy trying to put our plane together. That way it lasts longer than the warranty. <laughs> Okay, so this one's not wanting to line up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something. You see this here? There's, there's a bit of a gap. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna see if I can just kind of move and manipulate um, the two halves of the plane until I get alignment to where I can bite. But I'm just not, I'm not feeling the bite. And I feel like I, feel like I might be on the precipice of hitting it. I am hitting it, I'm just not getting purchase. Because look, if you come around the other side, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. If you look, no, right here, right here. See that? Watch this closely with the light on. You guys see that right there that I'm pointing at? Mm -hmm. I want you to watch what's happening. This is how I can tell when I push, it's moving it. You see that? Oh. That's what I'm talking about, guys. So what I really want to do is I want to get purchase between those two points. And so I'm gonna take this one out. And it's not wanting to come out, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. We've had this problem before on some of our economy planes. This one here would probably fall into that realm. It's got a lot packed into it for the price point, but I'm a little bit disappointed this screws aren't lining up a little better, because this is frustrating. Ooh, 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 did I get it? I don't think I got it. Okay, I'm trying to go backward just to see if I get it out. I might fight this for a minute and come right back. Okay, so on that screw, we ended up using the smaller screw just because like, I don't know what the heck was going on. So it's just, you know, this is why you watch these videos because sometimes it's better to know that you're gonna have this conflict than to assume it's gonna go smooth because they almost never go that smooth. Um, okay, great. So we've got that plane built. Um, looks really good. It's definitely a cool plane. Um, definitely not a 787 outline and definitely that flat wing is not good. The one thing I think would make this plane look a lot better is if there was just a little teeny bit of dihedral in there because really there'd be quite a bit of dihedral on this plane. Um, and it would also help it fly better but the flight controller should keep us level. All right, so let's look at landing gear real quick. They are pivoting. And I think that there is, is there any indication of which directions for it? I guess we'll put all the uh, screws enough to build a whole nother plane away here. And we'll go to the next page. It might actually give us the answer to my question. Okay. Yeah, not so much. Tilt angle of the front gear is toward the head of the aircraft. Toward the head of the, the aircraft. Center of gravity. So watch this. They're saying tilt angle Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so ugly. It's <laughs> so terribly ugly. Um, okay, so then these, 
These ones are pivoting. I want them to pivot down. So I want the heavy part on the back, but they definitely go this way. Yeah, like that. I want them to drop like that. Okay, so they're long enough to reach well past the EDF modules. Yep, that's how they go. They are easy to put in and out, which is super cool. And I love the fact that you've got those big mains. It's just the nose gear is so fugly. Is it because it's so it's like, disproportional? It's terrible. Um, like it's so terrible. But then the mains look okay. Like I can tolerate the mains, but this one is just so like doubly as long as it should be. Right. It's almost like not not bad if it was shorter. I I could maybe get behind that sort of thing. But we are going to show it as is for now, and we'll probably end up eliminating that. Because, I, I mean, seriously, it looks sweet until we put that thing in. So we'll have to come up with something cool to get that done. Now, obviously, uh, this plane, we have two batteries charging. So our next move is going to be to basically put a battery in here and see what type of performance we get inside. We're not going to fly it inside because, as you can see, it's dark. Mm -hmm. um, so once we get this thing fired up, we should be able to see how the differential thrust works. Now, full disclosure, I brought over my screwdriver set and I didn't need any of them. Okay, so this battery is 100% charged. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the factory provided or the stock one. So this one's still charging, supposedly at the same rate. So we're at 77%, okay, so we're at, uh, about four volts per cell. So that's fine. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not unexpected because of course this charger is considerably more expensive than the plane. Okay, right. I believe it's actually more. But if you're getting into planes like this uh, Carbon Z T28, see I said it right, yeah, or like yeah. this J11 right here, then you're gonna eventually be needing something like that anyway. So like I tell people, this is something I tell people when they ask questions because we actually get a lot of questions from people. And that is, hey, uh, do I buy you know, an NX6? Do I buy an NX8? Do I buy an NX10? And I say, if you're the type of guy that likes to throw away a lot of money, buy the six first, then buy the eight, and then buy the 10, and then buy the iX14, and then buy the iX20. <laughs> That's what Spectrum would love you to do. Just make sure you buy them from our links. But if you really wanna do the smart thing is, gauge your interest level with something like this, okay? or like that little zero or you know something fun, see if you're even into it. Then, as soon as you know you're into it, pull the trigger. Get yourself something nice, something programmable, and then move forward. Don't waste time, you'll never regret a good transmitter. These ready to fly ones are super limited and they're only gonna do what they do, which is not much. Okay, all right, so battery. <clears throat> Let's talk about this for a minute, camera crew. See this? I think the battery's gonna go vertical, think think. I don't know. I'm just thinking because it looks like it's going to fit on the vertical. I mean, you could put it this way, but I just don't see how that would fit. That is a pretty big, oh, are you supposed to go the other way? Does it say what direction it That's, goes? I was trying to look over your shoulder. I bet it goes this way. We get a lot of weird battery placements in these planes. Okay. Where does the battery go? I mean, I know it goes in there. I just don't know how it goes. How it goes. Because look, there's only so much room in here. And like that That's clearly doesn't right. work. And this clearly is the right cover. And that wiring should clearly be down here when we're done. So I think we might've missed a step there where we were supposed to push that in and around under the if, wings. If that was all pushed in, would the battery go sideways? Would it fit in between those two little pieces there? Uh, or is it too wide? I don't know. I think you can fit it in an angle like this. Oh yeah, that's the way it goes. Right there. That's where it goes, guys. Okay. Okay, so then that gives us plenty of room and there'll be a bite point for this black clip. Okay, so let's plug it in. First, generally turn on your transmitter first and stick down. Then we're gonna plug in the XT30, which is pretty obvious it's keyed, it only goes one way. So we're gonna plug this in. Oh man, there's Ooh. lots of super high-pitched noises. Your dogs will love that. Yeah, if you have dogs barking from down the street, you'll understand why. Okay, so then we're gonna stick this in here and then get it to snap. 
Okay, it's pretty sweet. We're gonna let it initiate. Okay, so nothing's happened. So all the way up, all the way down. There we go, so it's working. Elevator, up, down, roll left, roll right. We are not getting any response from this aileron. So we have roll left, we have roll right. Look at this. There's definitely some mixing going on here. And then throttle. Ooh, those sound good. Wow, yeah. Wow, that's that's a pretty good amount of power. Yeah. So I'm excited to see if that's enough to actually fly. It's close to a one-to-one. -one. Let's do the one-to-one -one test. That's full. I'm still holding it a little bit. That's pretty, that's pretty good power though for a little cheap EDF. Now, one other thing too is I noticed that my ailerons, see this? It's, it's kind of not, not working. So we got to figure out why that's not working. And so the first thing to do would be to flip over the plane, pop the hatch access, and you can tell this one's just not moving, okay? So I don't know if it's not moving because it's out of, it's unplugged. I can tell it's unplugged. I just don't know how it's unplugged. So my next move is to do some diagnostics. So that's why you're here on Brian Phillips RC. If you wanna help support the channel, buy these planes from the links in the video description below. We're gonna go ahead and do some diagnostic work together. I bet you anything we unplugged it when we were st stuffing those wires down. So I'm gonna try to use what came with the plane. Okay, so it looks like, oh, that one just came to life, did it? No, not quite. Let's see if I can get it to go. You guys can definitely see what's going on. Oh, there, did it just come to life? I think it's the other one jumping just as you move the plane. Yeah, it yep. is, you're right. Okay, so did I plug one in backward? Um, no, and no, they're both plugged in the right way. So that one just came undone. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that works. I'm gonna unplug this one. No change. Okay, so that's weird. Definitely have the color. Oh, oh did you one. see that? Yep. So I don't know if there's something on this connector or there's something on, maybe there's something else that's going on that see it when I do this. I wanna show the people at home. Turn on the light for us, camera crew. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this from the Y cable and go to the other Y cable. I'm not seeing anything happen. Mm -mm. But then what did I do that caused it to jump? I definitely got contact somehow. Mm -hmm. My guess is we have a plug that's maybe got a little damage. I'm pulling and it's definitely moving this wire. Now sometimes you'll get a servo that's kind of screwed up. I wonder if that's what happened here. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the other servo, which is down here. That blue light makes it very hard to see. Oh, by the way, different modes. See that? Ooh, that's the other thing I could do is just see if there's any movement. See, there's no elevator movement at all, so that's not a good sign either. Could be that I'm upside down. Okay, so I'm gonna go brown is up, black is up. What the heck? Okay, then I'm gonna plug this in. I just wonder if it's a flight controller thing. Sometimes on these Chinese flight controllers, you get some weird behavior that you wouldn't expect. But having none of the flight control surfaces move is generally not a good idea. Can you shut that flash off for me, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, you gotta really stuff all these wires in and out of the way too, which is awkward. Okay, so we'll stuff this down. So if you guys are new to the hobby, um, so far this build has kind of left me thinking this might be a little bit more complicated than the average Joe might want to start with. Um, but you know, you can do it if you want. It's just, you might run into a little bit of trouble and you'll have to get some help from a video like this. Oh man. Okay, so let's see if I can get this back on. Okay, so we got it back on. Let's see what happens. Was that the one that was moving? 
I just honestly can't remember. Yeah, there's definitely movement on those. Mm -hmm. So the elevator axis is moving, the roll axis is moving, but if you were to try to take off right now, what's gonna happen to this plane? It's gonna roll like this because that's down. So we have to get to the bottom of this, which means we probably have to open things up. Wait a second. That's the one that was, that's the one that was not working. So that one's working now. So that tells me something else is up. Yep. So now is the time we have to figure this out. Okay, good news is that means that both servos are capable of working. That means there's probably a little something wrong with our Y cable. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you guys aren't familiar with Y cables, Y cables are these things. Okay. So I wonder if we just have a bad connection on one of those. These landing gear are really kind of getting it. Ooh, ooh. Nope, nothing. I'm gonna take these landing gear out because they're in my way. So what do I need to do to make this work? Unplug that. I'm just for grins and giggles. I'm gonna try to plug it in backward. It's not gonna work, but it's worth, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's gonna damage something. I think what's going on <clears throat> is we must have something mismatched somewhere. Like one of these solder joints might be broken. But I'm gonna try this. We might poke around for a minute and then come right back when we figure it out. Okay, so I switched the wires and wouldn't you know, the movement changes over to this side. So what that tells me is that my servos are good, but there's something not quite right on this Y cable, okay? so. Um, I'll just go to any mode so I can, I think it's freaked out because it's upside down. Okay, so once we get to the level configuration, see, we've got one side moving. Okay, now I'm just gonna flip these around and go to the other side so that I can show you that it's gonna work on the other side. So now we've established that the Y cable is the problem by doing some basic diagnostics, okay? So if the Y cable's bad, then that means we have to figure out a way to either fix the Y cable or go into a different port. I don't think we're gonna get so lucky to go into a different port. But what I do have to figure out is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna mark the bad one. Boy, that is really hard to tell. Okay, so I can see which one's moving. I'm gonna disconnect the moving one. This one's a good one, the other one's bad. So this one's gonna get a black mark on it, okay? Now that black mark is just basically gonna give us a reference so we don't have to keep chasing our tail on what might be wrong. And I'm just looking at these pins because remember we did get it to wake up at one point, remember? Mm -hmm. So we know it's either on this side or it's down to there somewhere. Could be somewhere in that the heat shrinks. And the only way I can think to do this would be to actually probably take the wing off um, so we can see if we can plug in down there, because it goes into this port. I know that it's good going from there to here, but I just don't think it's good going from there to here. So that leads me to believe that one of these is probably goofed up. So I have to unplug the Y cable. Okay, so I unplug the Y cable. Now none of it's gonna work. And I'm going to take a minute and we're gonna get a lighter and I'm gonna show you now that we know which one's bad, <coughs> excuse me. We know that which one's bad. We can figure out if one of these pins maybe isn't soldered. And we don't have to do this too often anymore. It's been a long time since we had to fix something like this. So we can tell this side's good, but we can't tell if it's broken here or if it's broken somewhere between here on the wire. So I'm just tugging on it or if it's actually the connection here. So there is a way. So I have to get an exacto knife and some heat Heat is gonna be, you can just keep showing that. Okay. Heat is gonna be a lighter and an X-Acto knife. That's what I'm gonna use for my tools because once I have those tools, a uh, digital multimeter would also be handy for this. So if you have like the world's crappiest digital multimeter, you should be able to do this. I just have this little thing from like Harbor Freight for like free. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this to, what is this thing? This says, um, I'll go to, there's a diode tester. I'm gonna go to ohms. So go to like, 
um, 2,000 ohms, okay? So 2,000 ohms, and then you see you got an, an I for infinite, and then you have like close to zero, okay? So now my next move is gonna be to pull this heat shrink off, and you're like, how are you gonna pull that heat shrink off? It's already heat shrinked. Yes, good point. And now you're thinking to yourself, oh, that makes sense that you marked the bad one. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just gonna use a little teeny bit of heat, heat it for just a second, and I'm gonna slide it down, okay? Okay, so I can see the continuity is, should be good there. Okay, so now that I know that that one's probably good, I'll hold it here and try to pull it back up and see if I can see the back. So I think black is good, okay? Now at some point you gotta realize this is all gonna go back where it came from. So if you heat it, you'll relax the heat shrink again and just let it go back to where it had been, lick fingers, cool it in position, okay? Now we're gonna do the exact same thing here. If you're lucky enough to be able to just pull it without heating it, you'd be able to see that right away. Just a couple seconds. Do it as little as possible. There we go. So that looks pretty clean to me. I've got a, a, what looks like a good solder joint there, so that's probably fine. So signal is white, so that's where you would tend to, to see your, your conflict anyway. So I'm gonna hold on this side, I'm gonna pull the heat shrink back toward the joint, and then that's sort of shrunk down, so I'm gonna heat it up and just relax the heat shrink again. Let that cool for a sec. Then once that's cooled for a sec, we can go ahead and brace it on both sides with our fingers. We don't want to rip out the ends. And then just slide that down onto the cable. It looks like crap, but it'll be fine for what we're doing here. And if a doubt, you can always just take some CA or tape and just tape around it. Okay, now the one that I assume is the problem, if the problem is here, would be here because we've already looked at the other two. Okay, heat it up, that's the signal. Hmm, need a little bit more heat this time again. Ah, look at that guys. So we found the problem. Okay, now for those of you that don't have a soldering iron, since we're doing this totally lazily, I'm gonna show you how to do this without a soldering iron, okay? because I'm too lazy to go get my soldering iron. And if you don't have a soldering iron, guess what? You can still fix this. Or if you're in some third world country that doesn't have access to AC power, then you can also do this. I'm not even gonna use strippers. I'm gonna break all the rules today. Look at this. See this? Look, this is what happens when you get old and lazy. You do stupid things like stripping wires with your teeth so that you get extra exposure to the lead that was used in China or wherever they built this thing. I am 99% sure this was made in Shenzhen, China. Okay. And you're like, well, how did you find that? Well, we just did it on camera. So that's how. Okay, now watch this. Did you guys see the solder melt? I didn't either. I don't know if I'm gonna get it hot enough for long enough. So the other trick would be heat this, then touch it, okay? Remember, I wanna do this without any special tools. So kids, if you're watching this, get your parents to help you with this. Don't burn your house down. Your parents might have a soldering iron. If not... They can at least help you with the flame. Yeah. Okay. So you see how that's red? See how it's red? We get like 415 degrees for just a second. So then all I need to do is just heat that solder. Let's see if we can get it. I don't know if I'm gonna get it hot enough. We may actually have to use solder, a soldering iron to fix that. But I'm pretty sure that's what's wrong. In fact, right now, it should, it should basically work, but it's gonna be really hard for us to actually vet that with just a multimeter, hmm. okay? So we're gonna shut this stupid multimeter off. It's not really gonna help us anyway. Um, so what were you gonna ask there, camera crew? Okay, but if those two little wires were in the same piece of heat shrink, they weren't touching enough to make contact. No, they were broken. 
They were physically broke. That's why when I moved it. We did get that split second of response. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are thinking, geez, Brown, you are being really lazy tonight. That's mm -hmm. all part of the show, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see that lead there? That lead is longer now. You see the lead that I stripped? It's longer, so now I could wrap this around and just go for pressure, but I don't wanna, I mean, it is a redundant surface, so it's not like it would absolutely have to be 100% all the time, because it's just one of two ailerons. Ailerons are redundant surfaces. You got a left, you got a right. But it's gonna take your rates and make it, you know, like half as effective. Right. Not quite half, it depends on which direction you're turning. But let's try this one more time. This is, again, this is extra, extra lazy repair. Try not to melt the wire. Oh, come on. This is, this is when like, I just want it to work because I want to prove that you can do it without a specialty tool. It's not even a specialty tool. Soldering iron is not that big of a deal. They're like literally dollars. But I mean, like we didn't have one growing up. Yeah, you I did. Probably did but. You did have a soldering iron because your dad did sing stained glass. That's true. Okay, so dang it, I was trying to do it without a uh, soldering iron, but I guess we're gonna have to have a soldering iron. So we'll be right back. Soldering iron. Okay, right so I'm gonna stick it in, dip the tip. Nobody wants a dirty tip. I'm gonna like literally let this warm up as little as possible because I don't wanna waste any time. I'm just gonna get some fresh solder. Yes, it looks like crap because I was trying to do it with a freaking lighter. And by the way, guys, this stuff does happen occasionally in RC. It's frustrating. It's annoying. There's really no excuse for it except for the fact that, hey, listen, this is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We start, we fly. And whatever happens in the middle <laughs> is what you get. Is what you get. Because we never know. I mean, we've reviewed hundreds of planes and we've got dead on arrival stuff from... Pretty much everybody. It's just whether or not the plane is worth it at the end that really dictates if it's worth going through the trouble. Okay, so we got a little smoke going. The it's always a good sign. Yeah. This one, I don't know. This is probably a fluke. I mean, what are the chances? Always. Okay, so we're going to heat this up, get a little puddle, and then there you go. So it's separated now, and that's fine. That's just because we heated it. Oh, for God's sake. It's just, just a little bit hard to reach. So I have to hold it with three fingers, and then I'm just gonna go like this. Boom, 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 boom. And you guys are probably thinking that is one ugly solder joint. You would be correct. Actually not, the flux is making it real hard to see. So normally I would, uh, I would be okay with that dark color but I'm just like really kind of struggling to see if I've got my wires soldered together. I'm trying to do this without any specialty tools and look what I'm doing. I keep getting new tools out. Cause I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm just regular Joe Blow kid that doesn't have any of these tools, what can I do to help that kid fix his playing? You see what I've done? I pulled that back with my fingernails. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have more wire exposed. Well, it's just a little teeny bit more. I mean, it's not that big a deal. Um, and then I'm just going to fold over. See, the problem is this wire is so small. Right. There's just not much to it. And I can't tell if you could see through my fingers or if you're going to lift the camera so they can see. I can never tell what's on screen. I just uh, have to assume that the camera crew is making the angle work. Okay, so I'm just folding those and just flipping them over. I've got a little bit of flux on my fingertip because that stuff melts in there. Now I'm gonna clean the tip. I'm gonna like go through the trouble of doing this the right way. See, now it's clean, now it's shiny, shiny. Now I'm gonna take the solder. I'm gonna just put that on there and just get that, get that solder joint done. Now we got a good solder joint. Okay, now after all that ridiculous amount of effort for one three-second solder joint, 
Um, okay, so now let's talk about this for a minute. That was annoying. Is it the end of the world? No, it still shouldn't be that way. But now that you know that it's possible to fix, now let's show the people what I'm gonna do to fix this. Okay, okay so I've got this heat shrink. It's all balled up, all crappy-like. And, and you're like, please say you're not gonna try to reuse that heat shrink. I am absolutely <laughs> gonna do that. Yeah. And you're like, why didn't you just use a soldering iron, Brian? Here's why, because I've had a hard time um, getting heat shrink to work with soldering iron. Um, you could do it, but it's just, I just don't prefer to do it that way. So now that cooled before I could get around the big blob. So now I'm gonna have to heat, I'm just trying to heat just the, the heat shrink, okay. And then once I get that warm, see I've got a little bit, a little bit of a perforation in the heat shrink. And that doesn't surprise me because of the nature of how big that ball of solder is now. And as you can see, I'm just gonna slide that back. So if you guys are new to the hobby and you're like, geez, I don't, I don't want all that hassle. I don't blame you, but the truth is, you're probably gonna end up with hassle like this once in a while. So it would be better that you learn how to deal with it now from Brian Phillips RC than when you're at the flying field desperately attempting to get your plane in the air. Also, what we're gonna help you do the best we can is we're gonna help you to learn how to do basic diagnostic work like what we just did. So you will be better than 99.8% of the world's population at doing diagnostic work. That was pretty easy and now I'm just gonna heat this edge until it shrinks back. Okay, now we have protected uh, that joint from the other joints, okay? It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it's good enough. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a second, get this stuff out of the way, and come right back. Okay, so the camera crew was asking me off camera while I was washing the flux off of myself. <laughs> she was like, uh, shouldn't you probably tape over the other ones? And I'm like, nah, you probably don't need to, but I'll do it, I'll show you what, what it would look like if you destroyed all your heat shrink. I got lucky on my first two, they just slipped right back over uh, because they weren't broken. So I'll just use a very small amount of uh, black tape and kind of cut it into squares. And then all I wanna do is just do a half fold. I'm not gonna wrap around it because if you wrap around it, you're gonna use a heck of a lot more and it's also gonna weigh a lot more. So you see what I did? That's all, I mean, seriously, that is plenty good for what we're doing here. It's gonna be in there. You're gonna get it relaxed into a position and the chances of it shorten out is just minuscule, okay? There's about a hundred other things that could go wrong on an RC plane, I wouldn't worry about this. Like we said, even if you lose both ailerons, you're still gonna have yaw access and elevator access for control. Now, here's the tough part, okay? We have now shortened our white lead by just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit in doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to be mindful of that now. And also, I have to somehow get that plug back in down there. So I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do that by basically taking all this crap back off right oh. now as we speak. Now, you could probably get that in there if you were in a big pinch but why are you in such a big pinch? This is a radio controlled airplane. You're doing it for fun. Don't you order things so you can fix them for fun too, camera crew? <laughs> Always. Yeah, okay. Order so, things so you can fix them. Yeah, exactly. So while we've got this off, we'll figure out why that screw doesn't go in too. Okay. Because remember we had to put in the other size screw. Right. And those zip ties do not appear to be necessary. I really thought you had some like magical trick for putting them back in besides taking the wing back off. What, for putting that, that one connection back, back in? No, there's no magical solution. The magical solution is a non, it's an anti-magical solution. It's the solution you didn't want it to be. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna slide that down. I'm just gonna turn this. I mean, it's a little bit better than completely discombobulating it. Yeah. So now this um, little bump goes that way and then the, the face with the exposed connectors goes that way, okay? I'm just gonna plug this in. I, I can't really do a whole lot better for movement. Okay, so now I'm gonna, you know what? Screw this, I'm just gonna lay it upside down like this. You guys see something? I wanna show you something, okay? When you're inside of a cabinet like this or a plane or whatever it is, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm gonna do it while it's down like this. Cause you remember I didn't wanna trap those wires up here. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it'd be better to just trap the dang wires. 
Are you, so you're testing it or you're going to test it right now? Oh, yeah, that'd probably be wise. But we need to look at that one screw, look. Oh. So we have one, two, three big screws and one small screw. Now, why did that not line up, camera crew? Well, you didn't screw in the right nope. hole. Nope. You didn't screw in the hole. Nope. Hole. I did it right. This was not lined up right. Oh. You see that? Yep. Now it might be lined up right. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Might. Okay. Not words I like to use with planes <laughs> like. When you're holding the wing on. Passengers, this is your captain speaking. The wing uh, we might make might it to on. Las Vegas at the prescribed time. Yeah, might, shoulda, woulda, coulda. I don't know if that twist is gonna help or not, but I am gonna see in about 10 seconds here. Okay, so I gotta get my battery lead to be untwisted. Okay, all right. Yeah, so once we get this all done, then what's gonna happen is we'll go in with the battery and we'll give it a quick test run before we get everything buttoned back up. Now these screws are gonna be invisible after a minute or two. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably get in here with the screwdriver and get that one lined up because we already know that's the questionable one. Okay, so we'll plug this in. All right, so then we're gonna drop this down and just, we're not going all the way in with it. We'll just kind of go in with it like that. And since I pulled off my landing gear, I have to slide those back in. So as per usual, Brian Phillips RC has managed to take a five minute on box build radio setup and make it into a half an hour, hour long video. It's but we're hour. the only ones that show fixing stuff like this. Well, no, not the only ones, but we're one of the few. Okay, all the way up, all the way down. I did that. All the way up, all the way down, off, on. All the way up, all the way down. Come on now. Come on now, all the way up, all the way down. Uh, I probably did it in the wrong order of events. Transmitter's on first. Plane is flashing like crazy, all the way up, all the way down. Nothing, off. There we go, all the way up, all the way down. Yep. There, now it's solid. Hey, ole, look at that. We have everything we wanted and then no differential thrust because you have to go up a little bit and throttle. You guys see that? And those are brushless motors, which is pretty sweet. So if you look up in there, they're definitely brushless motors. That is a lot of blowing. It is. <laughs> that is. That is a lot of blowing force. So this plane definitely blows, guys. Um, okay, so now the next move is gonna be probably to get these wires lined up and we're gonna, or excuse me, the holes lined up because remember we had problems with one of them and we don't really care if it does that, that's fine. I'm gonna go to the 3D mode so it stops the stabilizer from trying to auto level things. I'm gonna see if I can get this one to line up and I'll show you what I did to get that to work. I already kind of pushed the plastic and that might have been enough and guess what? Mm. We are biting already. Good. Yep. So that's gonna mount our wing way better. So we actually fixed several different problems. So maybe it's not so bad that we had that issue. Um, now I just need to put this long skinny screw back with its buddies and uh, in with the bag of screws that we didn't need any of, but we did manage to get six of from China. No, we used one for the tail, didn't we? One of the long ones? No, oh. we used zero. Okay. Oh wait, you're right. We did yeah. use the long one for the I tail. Because I thought it was the right. opposite. Yep. You're correct, cam crew, I was mistaken. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten these four screws back in. And then basically what we need to do is find out in the manual, if you could look for a second while I'm running these screws in, mm -hmm. is there a CG? I see a CG right there. Yep. Okay. 85 millimeters. So what tool do we need to check the CG? If I can get the calipers. Mm-hmm. And do you still have your black I have marker? a marker. So we're gonna check the CG. The CG is of course going to be the center of gravity. And it's gonna help us to know if we have our battery located correctly so that we have the right amount of, ooh. Now this time I'm missing the hole on this side. 
uh, by pure happenstance. So let's just see if we can get the screw out of there. This one's just not wanting to line up now, and I think it's pure luck. So we'll pause and get that and come right back. Okay, so I just kind of held my index finger or my middle finger in there and pushed out on the side of the fuselage to get that to go. Now I'm just gonna put this battery where I think it's gonna go and we're just gonna tuck that down in there, no problemo. And then the camera crew has the calipers here and I'm gonna put the lid back on for the battery access, the hatch access. So now one thing about these planes that you guys wanna make sure you double check is obviously the center of gravity, especially if you're new to the hobby. Um, not because the center of gravity impacts you more, but because you're less skilled, it's gonna make a bigger impact on your flight performance uh, because the center, of, the center of gravity is where the plane pivots upon, okay? So this is uh, supposed to be 85 millimeters, good Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. That seems like way too much. Okay, so start from zero and then 85. Mm, that seems like maybe way too far back, but I'm gonna start right here. I'm hoping the camera crew is gonna get an angle so you guys can see what's actually happening here. Looks like, so that's, that's where the center of gravity is. Now I'm marking the top of the wing and really I should probably be marking the bottom of the wing because it's gonna be, no, I'll hang it upside down because this plane will sit upside down. Okay, and then I'm just doing this again on this side, coming out halfway and make a little dent. Now, why do we make a dent? Because if I make a dent, then I can darken the hole by sticking something dark in it like that. And then I can check with the battery installed. I've balance it on my fingertips and you can tell that's actually pretty dang close. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. So this is a 950 milliamp hour. That explains the 950 milliamp hour. So now I'm gonna take this opened. And because I don't like remembering this crap, I'm gonna take this open. Oh, how dare you mark your own nacelle, Brian? You see what I did? Mm -hmm. What a dummy. Okay, I'm gonna just make a line here. I'm gonna draw an arrow going that way. And I'm gonna say 950 milliamp hour MAH. And no, it's not ma, milliamp. What is it? Mil milla. Milliamp, it's a milliamp. Yeah, it's a milliamp. It's one thousandth of an amp, okay? And this is a three S, folks. And we usually mark our batteries too on ones that come with Ready to fly plane. Yeah, like so this. this would be like the A170, okay? A170, look at the A170. Also known as not. It's the B787. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. This thing is going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to see it fly. I really, really want to unbutt ugly the nose gear so badly. But I think what they're doing is they're making it stick up like this so that if you give them a camera angle from down on top of the go right to the edge of the eyelid so they can see that. It's pointing the nose up. So if this were level, my guess is what would happen is that it would fly, but you would have to apply so much elevator, there, there'd be some conflict there. I think they're trying to make it easier to take off, but it is so dang ugly. I really wanna fix it like right now. Can we fix it? We please? said we were going to show it stock. Were we? Why did we it, do that? Because sometimes they're not worth doing. That's so else. ugly though. If it was, and plus if it was further out, it'd be more pretty. It'd look more real. Cause it's like on a real airliner, it'd be further up actually. Cause they're not, they're not like back here. This is pretty close to the nose compared to some. Now, if you put this the other way, I'm going to show you what it looks like. That looks very ugly as well. Like ultra, ultra ugly. It's supposed to cant forward. That's what it said. That's I mean, it's, so it's weird. equally dumb looking, yeah. isn't it? Is it worse that way? You know, and this wire probably goes all the way through this thing. And so what I'm thinking we could do is just like cut it, the plastic, and then just like literally chop this off and just fold it to go back in so it's level. If it was level, it actually wouldn't look half bad. I'm just, I want to cut it. I know you do. Bad. Are you going to not let me cut it? It's only been an hour and 15 minutes. 
I know. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. For this unbox build radio setup? <laughs> yes. You know what? We're already, we're already this <laughs> extensively involved. So time for some tools. Pause it and coming back. Okay, so I have some tools. I have some side cutters. I have lineman pliers, okay? And then I have needle nose pliers. You could probably get away with just needle nose if you're really good with this. But here's what I wanna do. I wanna take and figure out how far down we can cut this. I understand that's backward. It's supposed to be like this, which looks so, so ugly. So if I take off to there, then I would be about, oh, that'd be pretty good. Okay, so I need to cut off this section here. So this section needs to be chop sueyed. So if we do that and it's not, if, if it's not enough, we'll know, okay? So I'm just gonna like cut this off right here. And worst case scenario, we're not gonna use a landing gear, okay? So if this, if this cuts off, I think what's gonna happen is there'll be a wire in the middle. So it's just gonna basically cut off and then we'll separate it. Yep, like I thought, okay, good. So now that that is cut, all I'm gonna do is basically relieve it from the shaft. So you were just cutting through the black plastic. Yeah, just through the black plastic. This is just an awkward cut, that's all. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna go sideways with it and see if I can, oh, I could also do this and just crush it. Because it won't hurt the metal, you know, it's just plastic. See, okay, now that's gonna come off first and then it's split in half you see the split mark that split is already there okay so i'm just going to open that up because this is this is so butt ugly that i'm going to fix it like <laughs> right now it's so terrible okay now let's let's look again and just see are we on the right track well yeah i mean it still looks pretty butt ugly brian what's wrong with you okay here's what's wrong with me i need to fold this a few times so this is where, okay, so we're just gonna put that where it belongs in the garbage can. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna measure with my tool how far I have to purchase to get that fold, okay? So now, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna replicate that. Actually, I'm gonna just mark, I'm gonna just mark the head of my pliers, okay? So watch this, I'm gonna use my marker. So here's the mark. Okay, so now that I have a marker mark, now I can take this and I can say, okie dokie, I know where it needs to bend. So now I'm gonna go past that point. I'm just visualizing, I'm looking at a spot past, like one of these dots on the counter. I'm lining up and then I'm going past it, okay? Got it square. Now I'm gonna just fold it, okay? Just like that. And you're like, what are you doing, Brian? I'm just replicating this, that's all, okay? Now, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna bend again, right here, but I have to brace it on this side so I can actually bend it. So I have to pull back just a hair and then I can bend it back. So what am I doing? I'm making another square box. Okay, now watch this. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna just square this up. I'll just unfold that a little bit. Now I'm gonna square this up. Now this is one where you gotta be careful. It's, it's gonna be likely to wanna break on you. You don't wanna break it. You wanna bend it, okay? So you could heat it if you wanted to, if you really wanted to make it a safe bend, okay? So you're like starting to come together, isn't it, people? So we're just basically replicating what the factory had built. I'd like the bend to be just above or just below where it had been bent so that we have better strength, okay? Yep, that's not gonna be perfect and it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be enough, okay? Remember, this is, this is a pretty light duty plane. It's not like this is gonna be going to the uh, museum when you're done flying it, you know? It's, it's probably gonna be lucky to survive. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. You see what just happened? Mm -hmm. That's what I was afraid might happen. Okay, but let's just see if it'll go in there. First of all, it'll go in there, but it's not gonna stay in there, okay? So as you can see, it already looks a million times better. Even though it's not perfect, it's definitely a million times better. So the good news is, I think I wanna go even lower with it, and that's what I was hoping for. So I cut a little bit high, just to be on the safe side. So now all I have to do is just cut down a little bit more, and then we're gonna get what we need out of this landing gear. 
So I'm trying to think the easiest way to do this so I can show people, but it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, guys. What we're gonna be doing is, is what we just did before. Yep, that's right, there we go. Okay, so now I need to just basically make my box, okay? And my box is just gonna go into that little plastic thing and hold it, okay? And I need to use up every little bit now because we're gonna have to be like super careful that we get enough material to actually make this thing hold in here, okay? So we're gonna be super careful not to break it because we don't need to break it. That would be a bummer if we did, okay? Do you guys remember what I said about this? If it's so, if it's supposed to be a scale plane, the landing gear need to be closer. So this is just what we're gonna do. Now you don't have to do this with yours, but I'm trying to use only materials found in the plane and on the soldering iron. <laughs> <laughs> now that might not be enough. It probably isn't gonna work, but we're gonna try it anyway. Ooh, we're close now. Look at that. It's oh, still it kind of snap in there. Still pretty ugly. Still pretty square. You know, that might actually work. I almost wonder if that's better. But look how much better it is. Even it's not, it's definitely not right. But it's so much better. <laughs> so much better. So I think what we might do in this plane, just given the nature of what we're doing, we have to weigh it now, camera crew. Let's oh. weigh it. I need to do one other step too. So she's going to get the scale while I keep kind of shaping this. I'll show you what I do with it. Um, just doing just a little bit more bending. Not a lot because we're real close. Okay. I think that's going to be pretty dang close. So I just, I basically made like a hook and I wanted to widen it and also give us that forward cant so that I can totally not do it forward. See? Okay, so that's dumb. So we'll go the other way. Well, that's pretty good. Got a little bit of an angle to it. Okay, so now the next and last step here, hopefully, will be to just kind of fold that so we get our squareness. And then I'm going to flatten this. I'm not cutting, I'm just squishing. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go like that. And that should hopefully give us something to hit the bottom, or I guess in this case, the top of the actual landing gear cavity, which is that square little slot that we're going into. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, don't you know? That's pretty good. Pretty cool. Already looks a ton better. And I mean, it was, it was, it was okay. It's not a perfect scale replica, but it's pretty close. All right, so we're gonna turn this on. And we have 0.0, .0 ounces, of course. I'm switching it to grams. And I don't know if I'm gonna have enough height. I'll hang it off the counter if I can do this. Oh, I gotta have the bottom on. So I'll just put that on there. 274 grams, 276. Check this out, guys. Check this out, guys. Oh, yeah. So you didn't need to do all that work on the landing here. What? That's good. You're not going to fly with them. Oh, I mean, we're going to fly with them, too. 260, 260. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Okay, so in case you guys were wondering why that matters, sub 250, totally free and clear from the stupid rules uh, from the FAA for drone registry stuff. So there you have it, unless you wanna go on a weight saving mission, I think you're probably gonna be stuck. But it's still a pretty cool looking plate. I mean, that thing looks really nice actually. I feel like the, I feel like the windshield should be a little bit wider, should it? Or am I mistaken? I don't know. That's on you. I think know. I think they've they've tried to do the square like it would be on an Airbus, and that's not the way the the nose looks. It's because it's not a yeah. And then, but then they did like a, an Airbus nose style. So I think if you wanted to make this look more like a Boeing, which I would like, you'd have to squish the nose down a little bit. And let's see if we can do that. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh yeah, that. Oh no, I don't know if that helped. It's a little better. But yeah, that is pretty sweet. I like the, I like the stock Boeing uh, livery on there that they obviously didn't pay me royalties for. Stupid. 
But guys, that's what you get when you get these Chinese planes. Sometimes they're like hit or miss. And I think on this one, I just want to do a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit more shaping on this nose gear. Break it. No, I'm not. I'm totally gonna just bend this just a hair. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. The camera crew, she does this to me sometimes and then she makes me doubt myself. Because I've never been. Okay, so let's do this. Let's see if I can grab this with the Lyman pliers and just pull it over just a hair. The Lyman pliers are gonna help make this happen. I just want it to fill the whole slot because then that'll help keep it uh, centered. Now, of course, we don't have any landing gear on. Now, keep in mind, if you belly land this, you're going to have to stall this thing carefully into the ground yeah. because the nacelles that hang down, they feel pretty sturdy, but you know, you're going to be flying at some speed too. You're going to get scratched up. Yeah, they'll get scratched up for sure. But I mean, you're telling me that doesn't look a million times better. Oh, a million. It, it looks at least a million, maybe two a million times better. <laughs> So there you have it, guys. Let's see if we can even turn with this thing now. Okay, so I'm gonna go, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cool. gonna work. But the thing is, I think what I might need to do, honestly, given the fact that I screwed the pooch on that, I have one other idea. I wanna try it and we'll come right back and show you what I did. Okay, so this is delaminated from the box that came in this plane. I took a regular pair of scissors, I cut the tab, I measured the size of that opening. I doubled it so it fits in there, okay? Now I'm cutting it to depth. Now watch this. Huge. It's going to be perfect. See, that's gonna be, we're gonna use a little china glue. I know china glue. I'm the expert in all things China glue. I have smart people working for me. They tell me what to do. <laughs> all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that China glue, we're gonna actually wipe off some of it. Oh yeah, look at that, it was mm. so juicy. Okay, so now normally you would let that cook off, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna let that cook off for just a second and come right back. We have links to this chain of glue in our supplies on brianphillipsrc.com. Mm -hmm. All right, so see this? This little thing is just gonna act as a spacer. Okay, cause that's only gonna go on one half. I'm just let that set up for a minute. In fact, should be able to go ahead and stick it down. Okay. So that's just gonna take the place of the wire that we shorted ourselves. Okay. All that's gonna do is just keep it square. That's it. And then this thing is gonna drop in here, so I need to double it up. So I'm gonna just fold it in half. It's just a little chunk of cardboard. Okay, so you just fold it in half, nothing special. This is, this is not an exact science. It's just kind of an exactly the easiest way I came up with in the last 30 seconds. Just put a little china glue slather there and a little china glue slather there. We'll just let that set up, oops. The best way to get the best results is to do it on your wife's countertop. Mm -hmm. Always. Always. Definitely. Got a little piece of high-vis vest on there actually, believe it or <laughs> is not. That what that was? Yeah, that's what that was, china glue. So we'll put that out of the way. Now we're gonna let that cook for a second and watch this. Now that it's cooked for a second, we're just gonna squish it down and then we're gonna close this over the top, okay? And then once we have that satisfactory, then you've got this nice square thingy, okay? It's probably gonna be a little bit harder to get in and out this way, but it's gonna keep it square. So we can let that china glue set up while it's in the hole or out of the hole, it doesn't matter. Usually when I slather it up with uh, sticky stuff, I like to stick it in the hole first and watch what happens. Mm -hmm. And then you just push it in just like that, folks. There you have it. Now you have a landing gear that's gonna allow this thing to taxi. In fact, let's put it on the ground and do a little taxi action. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, differential thrust. Wow. It's kind of an on or off sort of endeavor. Whoops, whoa buddy, get back here. 
Definitely no thrust reverse. Whoa, buddy, she's a little crazy. Let's see how the thrust reverse are the. There's gyro on that. Oh man, the thrust angle is crazy. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of a, a suggestion to turn to the right or the left. And we've seen that before on some of these smaller planes, so it's no big deal. But then we're into the uh, 6G and everything's working. Elevator's working, the yaw axis is working, but as you can see, it's a little bit wonky. And then of course we have roll access. So super cool. A170 from WL Toys, and we fixed the completely butt ugly landing gear. It's still somewhat butt ugly, but it's a whole lot less butt ugly than it was just a few short seconds ago. And look at that beautiful landing gear action. Oh yeah, so cool. Can't wait to fly it for you. Hope this unbox build radio setup helped you feel better about how well yours went. <laughs> but if it didn't, and you still got some joy from watching me suffer, then smash the like button right now. Buy this thing from the links in the video description below. And if you've already bought it and you're just stumbling across to thinking, ah, how do I make this nose gear not look terrible? And I gave you an amazing idea. One thing you could do is become one of our amazing patrons. We have Patreons that are supporting us monthly. If you wanna be one, there's links down below. A Little bit past where this plane is, but then there's also a link to PayPal if it's just a one-off thing. But we still think by far the best way to help support Brian Phillips RC and all the work that we do in the RC community and for and with the RC community is to buy amazing planes that we review. Whether you find that they suck or they're amazing, we never try to tell you to buy just this plane. We just want you to buy a plane, a helicopter, a quad, um, whatever it is, a flying bird, a weed whacker, those sort of things. But we leave links down below and you guys can make up your own mind. That's why it's so nice here is we are gonna show you when things don't work, like the Y-splitter cable that we got that was bad. Like the fact that there's no dihedral on this. Like the fact that the nose gear was so ugly that I had to cut it in before I even made in the plane, okay? That's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. Generally, we try not to use specialty tools on brand new planes, but if you're in the hobby, you're gonna have a soldering iron, I hope. If you don't have a soldering iron, uh, it's, something, link. it's something you want for your tool bag, because yeah, you will use it. Will. Um, get some flux, get some rosin core solder. And then if you move your ranks to something like this, or this helicopter here, or some of these planes in the background, we do tons of different flight footage tons of different mods and tons of different unbox build radio setup of late we've done more stock stuff so we can help get you the best bang for your buck on these things out of the box we try not to use a bunch of upgraded stuff but occasionally we do that and we'll show you exactly how to get the most out of these planes on brian phillips rc so if you're brand new to the hobby and you think this is the plane for me eh, maybe after watching this video you might do something that's more simple you know like this or maybe you'll do something that's really, really simple looking like this, that's terrible to fly, and you'll find out from experience. Unless, of course, you put an open TX transmitter on it, or something like this that's way, 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 way past where you should be right now, and we will help you understand by watching me crash when a linkage failed. Or something like over here, like this beautiful T28, or the A10 in the background, or the P51, or the P47, or the other T28, or the Zero, or the P51, or the, you know, we've done so many, and we have literally hundreds more. I'm not exaggerating. This is what we do. We've been doing it for almost a decade now, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah, nine years. Like nine mm -hmm. years now. So we've done so many planes. Oh, and then don't forget the one under the table, mm -hmm. of course. Again, don't do that if you're new. But if you're returning to the hobby and you're like, hey, Brian, I've got balsa wood planes. That's all I grew up building. I got gassers. You know, I don't know anything about the latest and greatest technology. I've still got crystals on my radio uh, from Futaba. I've got a four channel transmitter. It cost me like $3,000 50 years ago. Okay, yes, I hear what you're saying. Um, we're here to help get you up to speed. So like, obviously this is a ready to fly plane, but we'll show you how to use these things where you can set up like we have 150 plus aircraft in here. We'll show you how to do that stuff. We'll show you what these batteries are all about and how dangerous or safe they really are, uh, depending on how you use them. And we'll show you how long the planes fly for and this sort of thing. 
and we'll talk about what EDFs are, electric ducted fans with brushless motors. We'll show you the difference. Why is a brushless motor better than a brushed motor? We're gonna do all this stuff on Brian Phillips RC because that's what we do. And if you want a beginner plane, we have a whole beginner list that you will have access to. Do we have that on the, web, the website? It is on the website now. Okay, so beginner planes, um, we have just kind of like a regular list and it's right there. Scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Maybe we should put that top. But anyway, beginner planes, it's very tempting to do something stupid like buy this and buy this and buy one of these expensive chargers right off the bat. Don't do that. Pump the brakes. Get something easy, something that's ready to fly. See if you can even learn the skill. See if your eyes are gonna be good enough. And by the way, these things can be much more frustrating sometimes. I'm not saying this one is, we haven't flown it yet, we don't know. Then even something like this. This one's a pretty challenging plane for us. Uh, jets fly fast. They're a little bit more challenging to land, but they're actually pretty easy to fly. Once you're in the air, they're good but you tend to try to do stupid things and make mistakes if you're like me. But on something like this, it's low consequence flying, low cost and high features. So it's a cool place to maybe be at the beginning of your RC hobby, or you get into something a little bit more sophisticated and you start learning how to fly. You start learning how to um, control the additional surfaces like flaps crow and you're mixing in flap rounds and things like that. We do all that stuff here on Brian Phillips RC. So we're gonna help you. And if you're like, what the heck is a flap run? Just stay tuned. There's so much more coming. We hope you'll be here with us. And if you haven't already, smash the bell while you're subscribing to the channel and click all so that you're notified of all the new content. And there's literally new content on a weekly basis, sometimes up to four or five videos. Generally there's at least two, sometimes there's three. Most of the time there's two. So that's the way it is. We're sticking to it and we hope you guys like it. We appreciate you guys, the world's best audience on YouTube. And yes, we do long format. We don't do shorts necessarily. Every once in a while we'll do one, but generally we do long format because that's where the detail comes. And detail is what you need if you're getting into the hobby or you're coming back to the hobby. So that's what we're here for. So stay tuned. We're gonna stop you from being a one and done.